Hi, I'm Dr. Prachi Agashi. I'm a squint specialist and I head the strabismus department at Advanced Eye Hospital and Institute at Navi Mumbai. So I'm here to just simplify as to what squint is. So that's a common question as to what is squint. So just to simply put it, squint is nothing but the misalignment between the two eyes that we all have. So how do we see squint as? If one eye is pointing straight, the other eye could be turned in towards the nose, away from the nose or just vertically up or down. Also, when we see in various directions, both our eyes move synchronously. So many a times in squint, the eye movements that occur in various directions are not synchronous. So let us look at few facts about why squint can happen in adults. Many a times I get questioned as to squint is there always from birth, right? So how come I have got it? So let us understand that squint can occur at any age. It can be there in small babies, in young children, in adults of any age, young adults as well as the elderly. The causes of why squint happen in each age group may differ a little bit, though some of them can be common. So let us look at how adults get squint or why they can get squint. So the common reasons why an adult can get squint could be just because they have had a glass power or a refractive error for a very long time, however it went unnoticed, undetected. Sometimes it can follow getting some injury on the eye or having a trauma to the head, getting hurt on the head, which can cause a misalignment in the visual axis. Some other causes could be just weakness in the muscles which are there in the body but can present in the eye. Examples of that could be sometimes a person can get some typhoid fever but can land up in a squint few months later. There can be some diseases that affect the muscles like myasthenia gravis which is nothing but a disease which weakens the muscles and the muscles get tired off uh, throughout the day and that can present as squint. Sometimes it can be a very, very serious cause like some problem in the brain, like a brain tumor or some pressure increasing inside the brain, which can cause again a disruption in the way both eyes work together and then lead to squint. So a common perception about squint is that it is just a cosmetic blemish. Does it really affect vision? Does it really affect function? Well. People generally think no, because all the activities are generally carried out normally. Well, but that is a misconception. It really does affect vision and the functionality in a big way. So let us first try and understand as to how our both eyes function together. Have you ever tried to give a thought as to we have two eyes? However, every object that you see, you just see only one image. How is that possible? So let me try and explain this phenomenon. Take a simple example, like you are viewing a pen, for example. So whenever you are viewing a pen with both eyes open, one image is formed on the back part of the right eye and one image is formed on the, on the back part of the left eye. Now when both these images, what, does the, what, does, what happens when both these images are formed? So both these images are basically carried to the brain and the brain generally superimposes these two images into one and gives us a three-dimensional view of that pen in a single shot. So that is called as 3D vision and binocularity, which is, a, uh, which is a function that we humans are privileged to have. So this phenomenon is called as binocularity. So this is what is lost when a person develops squint. So to put it simply, you will not have 3D vision, you cannot enjoy 3D movies, you cannot ha enjoy 3D games, you may have difficulties in navigating on the roads or getting a depth perception of ditches. Another point is when you're viewing or when a person with squint is seen, what happens is the person is using only one eye. When a person with squint is viewing, because only one eye is straight and the other eye is deviated, the person will tend to use only the eye that is straight. 
As a result, the field of vision is also reduced. So what do I mean by that? You can simply close your hand with your palm and see that you, whatever you're seeing on that side where the eye was closed is suddenly not visible. But what happens in a person with squint? That is what is really the thing that a person is seeing. So if you close your one eye and you're just seeing with one eye open, that is the field of vision that a person with squint has. And if this eye is deviating, this vision is completely lost. So that is another functional issue that a person with squint does have. So I have a squint and I want to visit the eye doctor. What all tests are, are to be expected to be done on me? Will it be painful? Well, no. So if you have a squint, you should go and visit a squint specialist. The test that will be done on your eyes would be a comprehensive eye examination, which includes checking your vision, your glass power, your back part of the eye, which is the retina. Apart from that, there are specialized squint tests. A simple test, what is done, is just you shine a torch in your eyes and you look at the corneal reflex that is there in both the eyes. If both the reflexes are in the center, it indicates that the eyes are straight. However, if the reflexes are not match, it indicates that a person has squint. Another test that is done is called as an alternate cover test. So as the name suggests, we alternately cover each eye to really see as to what is the type of squint. Also, we get an idea as to whether one particular eye is becoming lazy. So followed by that, we use certain specialized glasses called as prisms to measure the squint. So this is a basic evaluation of the eye muscles for the squint. Now to get an idea as to whether both eyes are functioning normally or are being used together, what I stressed upon earlier, we do certain tests to measure your 3D perception through some specialized charts by making you wear 3D glasses. And also using the same glasses, we try and estimate whether both the eyes are being used together or one particular eye is used more than the other. Apart from that, there are other specialized tests which we call as diplopia charting. So a person who really complains of double vision, we actually map it, map it out to see where the person is seeing maximally double. A similar test is quantified on something called as a HES chart. Apart from the eye test, we might sometimes need to conduct certain systemic tests or certain tests on your body. Why is that required? So as I had mentioned earlier, if we suspect that the squint is a manifestation or a presentation of some problem that is happening in the body, we might want to get certain blood tests done, typically to rule out problems that affect the muscles of the eye, which might include a simple uh, blood test, sometimes thyroid test, sometimes tests like uh, to test the muscle uh, markers, or sometimes a neuroimaging or an MRI or CT scan to look at the position of the eye muscles as well as to rule out any problem in the brain that is leading to the squint. So how can we treat squint? Commonly, it is believed that we can use certain eye drops or eye ointments to tighten the eye muscles and get the eyeball back in place. Well, unfortunately, it doesn't work that way. So if our systemic tests have really pointed out to any reason why we can really come across that squint, we would want to treat that cause first. However, if all those tests have turned out to be negative, then we would just want to treat the eyes. Now what all does that include? It would just include a pair of glasses if the glass power has remained uncorrected. It can be the use of certain specialized computerized exercises wherein we actually enhance the eye muscles and the brain both to really work together and improve the eye position. Alternatively, it could be the use of certain specialized glasses called as prisms. So what are these prisms? These are glasses which actually help in changing the position of the eye and correcting the squint. Last but not the least and maybe the most important is sometimes a surgical correction of the squint. So what do we do is basically each eye of ours has six muscles which actually help in moving the eye synchronously in various directions. We identify as to which muscle is working more or which muscle is lax and accordingly loosen or tighten the eye muscles to make both the eyes straight. 
So what are the benefits of getting this squint corrected? Is it really required? The functional benefits include using both the eyes together, getting back the 3D perception and improved field of vision. The cosmetic benefit that occurs out of treating squint is visible, externally visible to the patient as well as to the society. Also, isn't it nice to look and feel normal? We as humans are privileged to have both our eyes aligned as a part of our normal human facial architecture. Also, when a squint is corrected, it really boosts the self-confidence of a person, leads to better productivity at work and improves self-esteem.